Today's video begins at the end. I'm showing you here that I have completely disassembled and partially reassembled an LDRC18499. And as I did all of the steps to get it apart, I recorded those steps and I made references to parts that would be easy to get or easy to replace or not so easy to get. And uh, some of the items are kind of elementary and some of them are a little more complicated. There's going to be bookmarks in a pinned comment or in the item description or in the um, video description so that you can skip around if needed if you're just looking for a specific things such as how to get a drive shaft out um, so uh, it's a little lengthy and a little not so exciting doesn't include any high speed driving or jumping or any of that kind of stuff but if you're trying to work on one of these cars I hope that there is some information in here that's helpful for you so the first thing we're going to do is get these body panels off and they just have a series of screws on each panel on the corners and some plastic to take off um, even though this is a disassembly video I don't think anyone needs help operating a screwdriver I'm going to take those off off screen here's what it looks like with the panels off You've got four panels, a whole bunch of little screws, and you can start to see the inner workings of the car. Um, since we're talking about parts availability, I have seen these panels for sale in this blue color and also the red color, and I've seen them just like a metal color, so you could maybe paint it custom or put on your own decals or whatever. So that's all for this section. We're going to take the wheels off now. So the truck comes with a tool for wheel removal. And I want to mention this because I saw in some reviews complaints that it didn't fit the truck. And uh, so we're going to take a wheel off with the tool that's provided. Maybe it's a lot of threads. Yep, there we go. That was good. Uh, so it does come off with the tool provided. I'm going to go ahead and get the other wheels off off camera, and then we're going to talk about the dimensions of the hexes. All right, here's what I found out for you. That is uh, five millimeters. So if you want to use a little socket because you don't like their tool, that's the size you need. The threads on the axle are 2.5 millimeters. The wheel hex is a 7 millimeter, which is a standard size, which means you could put wheels on this truck that are aftermarket. While we're talking about the wheels, I have seen these wheels for sale if you wanted or needed a stock wheel. I've also seen them in silver which I believe is for the 18401, but other than the color, uh, same wheel. Also, I'll quickly mention that I've seen some reviews complaining that this wheel entire combo is not glued. Um, I have found mine to be glued. As a matter of fact, they did a pretty good job, but you can, you can actually see a little glue there and it does not separate from the wheel. It is glued. So there you go for that part. Okay, stuff's about to get serious. We're going to separate all of this running gear from the cage. And it appears that if we remove this screw and this screw here that holds in the skid plate uh, motor mount, And if we also remove the top shock screws on all four corners, 
this whole top's going to come off and reveal all of the inner workings. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to unplug these wires from the electronics so we can completely separate this and get a better look at what we've got here. Um, I took a picture of it so I know how everything plugs back in. I always think that's a good practice. All right, let's take a look at what we got sitting here before we move on to the next section. We've got a 9 gram servo and... I have seen those for sale from LDRC, but I'm sure you could get a servo a lot of places. This is hard to show with everything being the same color, but this screw here holds on a servo mount bracket. I have seen those for sale. A 280 brushed motor you can get just about any place. Oh, and um, the servo is a three wire so that is easy to come by so that's what we just dropped out of the chassis while we're looking at this I would mention you can see there there are a whole bunch of different holes for that rear shock mount to relocate it to kind of do some suspension tuning and right there there are a few for the front so you could you know out of the box move those shocks around and get a little bit different suspension. But uh, so we've got it all separated. Now in this next section, we're going to talk about something serious and that is how hard or easy it would be to put on aftermarket links or shocks or drive shaft. Regarding the suspension parts here this is where potentially uh, the vehicle is easy to repair but a little challenging to upgrade this is a, a standard link that has a hole on each end for a bolt to go through and a standard shock that has a hole on each end for a bolt or a screw to go through and what we have here instead is on the link, on one end there's a screw, but on the other end there is like a ball and socket joint where it snaps on and off. Same is true for the shock. At, at the top there's a hole for a screw to go through. But at the bottom, they have this screw that has two uh, ball-type sockets so that your link and your shock can snap on. So it would take some creativity here to put on some aftermarket metal links or shocks. Um, I have seen these so shocks for sale, though, for a direct replacement and also... I've seen them for sale as an oil-filled shock that will snap on like that. And we're not going to pop every single link off and line them up in a row. Um, you get the idea here. The drive shaft is held on with Phillips screws. I've seen those available metal also. Um, even though we're not going to pop off every single link, I am going to take that drive shaft off and so we can see if uh, an aftermarket drive shaft would go on there easily if you wanted it to. I have the drive shaft off and this mounting point right here for the drive shaft I measured to be 3.7 millimeters in diameter. And this mounting point for the drive shaft's other end on the transmission, I also measured to be 3.7 millimeters. I'm not familiar with that size, 
uh, when I do the upgrade videos in the future for this car, I will most likely stick with the uh, metal drive shafts that were designed specific to this car. And off screen, I took these screws out and pulled this cap off and confirmed that the gears inside the differential are also metal two screws right here and that would allow this motor and transmission assembly to come apart from the motor mount or skid plate kind of a dual purpose item um, I think we've seen enough to know how easy it would be to repair or upgrade or not easy depending on how you're you're looking at things to wrap up the video, we're going to drop the electronics out and review those. That's what we're going to do next. Earlier in the video, to get the top and bottom of the car separated, we unplugged some electrical connections. This is the bottom side of the car's ESC receiver combo. And... There are two screws. They're in here at a funny angle. There's one right there and one right there. I'm going to take those two screws out and then this piece should pop out and we can get a better look at that part. Something else is holding it. No, it isn't. Okay. There is the car's electronic speed controller receiver combo. Um, I have seen those for sale also. Um, it has one additional screw holding it in place once you remove the cover. I don't think we need to take that out of there. Um, replacing one of these and trying to program it to a controller is uh, probably beyond the scope of what we're accomplishing here. Or attempting to accomplish but that that's how you get to it if you need to get to it 